Rafael, congratulations to you. Could you tell fans uh, what a significant moment this is for the Rockets franchise with the ability to add an impact player to that young core that you've already developed? Yeah, I mean, we we think we're we're certainly hopeful. Uh, it's very impactful. There's there's a lot of work to be done. We have to figure out, you know, who, who's going to be there, who's not going to be there. Obviously, at least one. If we stay there, at least one player won't be there. Um, we have to figure out if drafting is the right thing. Like we we, um, but it but it but it's but it's better than 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 all but one alternative, right? So we're we're excited. We were excited coming into the draft. We felt like. We're going to exit with really uh, an improved team, and um, and uh, you know, and we're still really excited. Randy McAvoy. Hey, Rafael, congratulations! Uh, just following up on that, so you obviously, when you guys start evaluating everything, you're not rolling out all options are still on the table. If you need to, maybe perhaps make a make a pick and package it to get more talent. As you guys evaluate your current talent with what perhaps could come in to help you. Yeah, I think I think that the easiest way to make to make a mistake is to predetermine what you're what what you're going to do. I, I think our approach generally to um, the draft free agency, even in season trades is 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 to look at everything as it comes up. And so we'll do all the work. Um, we've been working on the draft for, you know, what seems like an extraordinarily long period of time now um and um but we still have over a month to go so so we'll keep doing all our work uh you know we'll research all the players in the draft not just you know the the not not just one or two everybody and 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 we'll we'll try and figure out the best way to uh to move forward if i could do a follow-up if you don't mind us uh what was it like uh, counting down there to the uh, you guys got down to the final two what, what was it like for you waiting to get the result um, so I, I decided that that probably would be unpleasant. And so I did not do it, uh, is the real answer. So I, I, I knew what time the results were going to be actually fully announced. And I, and I figured out what they were at that time. Jonathan Fagan. Um, with a second pick in a draft that's considered particularly strong in the top four, let's say, do you expect to come away with a star player at some point? He'll become a star player out of this draft. And if you do, how does that impact the other decision making on roster building and the timetable that applies to that decision making? Yeah, um, I, I think the goal, you know, is to find us to find a star player. That's uh, again, going back to the first question, I think that's that's always our goal is to find is to find really talented basketball players. Um, and and we, when you're when you're bringing in young players, especially, you know, you, you're really looking for star potential. Um, I, I don't know that I would use the word expect. I think um, I don't want to put that pressure on a player, but also, you know, what we expect of a player is that they're going to give us everything they've got. And that they're going to work as hard as they can, and um, that—that's kind of the only expectation we have. I, I do think we're likely to get somebody really, really talented um, if we pick the pick, um, and um, and if we don't, it will be because we receive somebody we think is really, really talented. So I, I think that's the case, um, and I—I I think that um, that probably was going to be the case for us, no matter where we pick. We're. Um, you know, we're, 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 we have three first round picks and, and we do expect to come away with a more talented roster, I think. Michael Shapiro. Hey, Rafael, uh, you've mentioned potentially trading the number two pick. Would you have some more thoughts if it was the number one pick? Would you still consider dealing in that scenario? Yeah, I, th I think it's, you know, I think that's like a, a big part of the job. I would, you know, I think that that, that yeah, is the yes is the answer. I, I think we would, it, I, and it's not so much, there's not necessarily that you're looking to do that. It's just, you shouldn't foreclose any, you shouldn't foreclose anything. Um, and, you know, you have to, you have to do the work and you have to, you know, use the allotted time and you have to have all the discussions and you have to, you have to go through the process. I think the process is worthwhile in, in and of itself um, to avoid, predetermining things. I, I, I think that's that's something we do try hard to avoid. Thank you. 
Chris Gardner. So Phil, how, approximately how many players will you bring in for evaluations? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've got a ton already scheduled. Uh, probably, I don't know, 40, 60, something. Is that typical year, regardless of the number of picks you have? Yeah, yeah. We 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 always uh, yeah. We we. I mean, last year we didn't have a chance to bring anybody in, um, but in a typical year, yeah, we would we would try and bring in that many. It, it's more challenging when you don't have uh, when you don't have as many picks as we do. But uh, given our picks and and uh, everything, um, I I think um, yeah. I, I I you know I'm I'm hopeful that that everybody that we ask to come in and visit us will will come in. I based on early feedback from from um, from player agents, I believe that to be the case. Saman Ali. Uh, Rafael, uh, now that you know what the, where the pick is going to be, how much does that certainty help your flexibility in trades, whether or not you make this, uh, whether or not you trade this particular pick or not? Yeah, I mean, we knew we'd be certain today. <laughs> so I, I do think that um, it, 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 we, when we scheduled out our preparation for the draft and for free agency and everything, we, we um, intentionally front loaded the work towards the picks we have in the twenties. Um, and um, uh, to make sure that we were really, really solid there because we knew we were going to be there. And, um, and so, you know, now, now, um, now our highest pick is something we, we now know what it is and we can, uh, you know, and we can do all the work. So uh, it, it's, we, we knew we were going to have certainty. And so, um, so I guess we'll just follow the schedule we laid out is, is, is really the, uh, the answer. Brian Bearfield. Have you got a chance to talk to coach Silas yet? And if so, when do you all plan to get together to start putting this uh, draft board and game plan together? Um, I, we've texted, I think he's on vacation. So he's going to join me. I'm in, I'm in Chicago. Uh, he's going to join me here in a couple of days. So we will do that. Um, and um, certainly, you know, uh, um, yeah, so we'll do that. Adam Spolin. Rafael, how much will the guys that you have on the roster, how much, how will that impact your decision on, on who you pick both at two and then when you get into the 20s? Um, I think you want to make sure that there's, especially for the picks in the twenties, you want to make sure that there's opportunity and everything else, but, but that's very at the margins. I mean, generally you just want to bring in the best players you can bring in. Um, and especially for a team like us, we're, we're young and we have interesting players and interesting young guys at almost every position. Um, um, but we also have, I think a lot of it is, is the types of players that we like. We have guys who are multi-positional and, uh, and can play with others. And so, um, um, so I, I think the answer is, is not really very much. I think, you know, um, if you're a great basketball player, you can play with other great basketball players and, um, and people just, they find a way to make it work. And, um, and actually, it, it, it often, in my experience, it often ends up being the case that um, the, the truly great players um, enhance one another, play better off one another, enjoy one another. Um, and so, um, and, and I, don't, I don't terribly worry about positionality. I, I think we've been more positionless than most, and it seems like that's likely to continue on for the foreseeable future. Ben DeBose. Rafael, you've said in the past that you didn't anticipate this being a Sixers process style rebuild. Whether you use the number two pick itself, you trade it, whatever you end up doing with it, certainly it's a top asset. Is this the kind of thing that potentially moves your timetable forward a little bit as opposed to if you had been at number 18? Yeah, I know I got asked that a lot. I've been asked that a lot. I, I still think the answer is no, because okay. yeah, we, we just, we were never like, it was never going to be our goal to intentionally be bad next year. And um, I, I never use the word sixers either, by the way. So like, just to be really <laughs> clear, um, but, uh, but yeah, like 
I do think that there have been teams that uh, at least anecdotally have one of their goals for, for their rebuild was to try to be bad multiple years in a row, um, you know, with the hopes of, you know, of getting one of stacking very, very high picks. And, and I think, you know, we, we were very competitive this year. Um, and then we, we got really, really hammered by injuries in a year in a condensed year. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the year is what it is. And I think that happens, that, ha- that happens, uh, that, that happens. And that's why we have a draft lottery. I think, I think, you know, um, so I, I think it's fine. We, and we we're ending up with a high pick this year, which is great. Um, but, um, but yeah, it was not, whether we were two or 18, it was never going to be our goal to be as bad as we could be next year. For example, that, that just wasn't in the cards. Jonathan Fagan. I just wanted to make sure I was clear. You did not, you literally did not see the card turn over at number five or number two. You, you I didn't look. I, I, I literally did not, Jonathan. So uh, in either case, and so you're being very calm now and analytical and so on. Does that mean there are some, there were emotions bubbling at that time or could you describe what emotions were? Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> I, I think the, the answer is I didn't really want to have those. So I did, I, I just, I was reading a book and therefore I didn't have any because whatever was happening was happening. And so then I had an alarm set and I logged in at a certain time. Oh, okay. We can work with that. So I, I think that I hope that would have been my answer no matter where we were. Um, but I, I just felt like the, the watching the process itself probably would not have been enjoyable. So, and given I couldn't affect it, I chose to opt out. So it wasn't even the good book. You were just like reading a, a page turner. Yeah. It, it, it was, I read a lot and, and they are not they, I will not tell you what I read because they're embarrassing and, and it's not, it's purely for, it's purely for entertainment, not for, uh, not for education. Uh, this is a night you can't really kill the story, but you're working on it. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Brandon Scott. Raphael, do you guys evaluate the G League and the college guys differently? And, and if so, could you explain that? Um, oh, you mean like the, the guys coming from the G League Ignite team, for example? Correct. That Correct. I should have clarified that. Correct. Um, n- no. Well, we try not to. Um, it, it, is, it, is, it is not simple, though, um, because the leagues are, aren't the same. And so um, the same thing goes for for for, for um, players entering the draft from from Europe, um, and so the the lack or, or for that matter maybe a guy who's really good at a small conference team, the lack of apples to apples um, does you know it presents some unique challenges, um, but but the goal at the end of the day is to is to you know make some assumptions and try and try and even even things out so that you can, you know, so that one is able to try and figure out what, you know, what's the right thing to do. Barry Warner. Uh, Assuming that you keep the number two pick, does that preclude uh, you entertaining free agency because you'll have uh, that salary plus if you keep 23, 24? Um, it doesn't preclude it. We, we can get under, we have ways of getting under if, if we chose to, I think it's always been more likely that we're, we're not, that we're going to be a, a, a mid-level team and we're going to stay over. Um, and we have ways of doing that, that we think are, are good for us too. Um, so, um, it, it will, it will affect uh, again, to your point, assuming we pick it, yeah, it, it will have an effect on our on our cap situation, but um, but you know it, it's not a it's it's not a it's not a huge one. So if, if an opportunity presents itself, I'm, I'm confident we can still take advantage of it. Um, if, what were, if, excuse me. What were Tillman's uh, emotions when you spoke with him? 
Yeah. I mean, I think he was, uh, I think he did watch it. Um, and I, I think, you know, like we're, we're, we, we think it's good for the franchise. Um, you know, obviously like we're all in this business cause we're hyper competitive. And so I think, you know, a little bit of him was like, you know, damn, I wanted to be number one, but I think, you know, we, we all think that this is that we're going to get a good player in some way, shape or form. And that, you know, um, you know, we're all aligned in that, you know, we think that, we're going to, we're going to build something special here over time. And so I think, I, I, I think it's just that I should, what I should have answered, sorry, at the very beginning is you should ask Tillman how Tillman feels. That is, that, that is the right answer. Uh, but, but I, I gave you my thoughts anyway. Um, they're not nearly as eloquent as he will provide. So I, I'd suggest you ask him. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Adam Spolin. You mentioned Steven's going to join you in Chicago in a couple of days. Just what do you want his role to be during this process? You know, we have a great, we have a great partnership. I mean, Steven's just a really smart guy. So, um, you know, um, uh, it's just, it's nice to have another really smart guy. I think um, what I generally want from Steven is whether it's a free agent or somebody we're drafting, I want to make sure that, that he, understands why we think they're talented that he is you know that that i express and that our, our team expresses to him um the way we think that person can be really successful and that um that that fits his version vision of how the team wants to play i i, I think the biggest mistake one can make in some respects is like if you get a guy and you're like man i think he could be for example a great low post player and then Steven doesn't want to run his offense through the low post. And so that that's, you know, that's a very simplistic uh, example, but, um, but that, that back and forth, I think is really important. And then, you know, um, not just with players we draft or free agents, but like even returning guys, like everybody, Steven has to live with him and they've got to live with him, but, and they have to live with uh, him and he has to live with them. So, um, so, you know, it is, we do try and make sure that people get a chance to talk before we pull the trigger on, on anything, um, just to make sure that that's a good vibe. And we're, we're batting hundred percent with Steven. Everybody likes him, but I, I still think it's just, it's just the right thing to do. So to me, to me, really, those are the things, um, you know, I, I think just in terms of time allocation, it's not, we, we don't ask him to get like fully up to speed on, you know, a hundred guys, you know, he, he's got a, he's got more than enough work just day to day prepping every day. He's already prepping for next year and what changes we can make to the offense, the defense and everything else. It, it, it's my job to really tell him, Hey, I think, I, I, I think this is the guy, or I think these are the guys. And then, you know, and then within that, why, and does that fit his vision and everything else? I, his vision is extraordinarily important. So I'm not trying to underplay it, but, 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 but once you get below that level, I think it's, it's incumbent upon me and, and my team to, to figure out what the right thing to do is. We'll take three more, Brian Bearfield. With that being said, and Coach Silas's vision, with the way the technology is set up today, a lot of the players get a chance to see these players in college and get a chance to see their highlights and things like that. Will some of the returning players you think lend, you know, their scouting reports to you, or not who you should take, but just saying, Coach, I watched this guy, I watched a little bit more. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Rafael, I watched uh, these guys, and this is what I think. Will you all take in some of that input as well? Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big information guy. And so I will, I would listen to you I'd listen to anybody who has an opinion. Um, and for sure our players, um, yeah, ballers, no ballers. So like it's it, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, multiple players know these guys, they know them from AAU. Some of these guys, uh, you know, in the draft played for our players, AAU teams. And so, um, I, I've already got in the bag a number of opinions and it's great. It's useful. It's every single data point is useful um, in making a decision. And, you know, the, the more, the more, the better is, is my view. Brandon Scott. Raphael, you mentioned earlier that between the three picks that you expected to have a more talented roster by the end of it, is there a specific area where you'd like to see an infusion of talent, whether that's, shooting playmaking 
shot blocking? I don't know. Like, is there an area where, where you might be more specific? No, I think we just want, no, we just, no, is the answer. Sorry. I, I, I would elaborate, but there's not really a, a good elaboration. No, we're, we're definitely not locked into, we need, you know, I, I think I, I would say some of the teams I was involved with three or four years ago, we felt like we had, we had like players so good in this area, this area, this area, this area that we realistically couldn't improve upon it. And then we were trying to fill like one or two small holes. This team is much younger and uh, biologically and in terms of playing together and everything else, like the guys who entered the roster on our team never once played together this year. And so, so we don't quite know the fit and everything else. We, we just know that we're going to compile a talented, as talented a roster as we can and, um, you know, one of the very best ways to add talent in the NBA is through the draft. And so, um, you know, we'll, I, I do think it's very likely we'll, at the, you know, at least add one draft pick, uh, most, most probably more, and, um, and also add some guys from free agency. And I think all of it will make us, will make us better. I, that, that certainly is the hope. And last question, Chris Gordy. Hey, Rafael, forgive me if this was already addressed, but uh, a lot of Rockets fans out there tonight, you could tell on social media and the like, were pretty uh, nervous and, and had their heart in their throat as, as the picks were coming in. Uh, do you have kind of a message just to the Rockets faithful out there uh, after tonight? Um, was not asked. Uh, no, I, I think, well, I, I so I, uh, yes, I, I do have a message. Um, I think we... We have a really we have a really good group of guys already. We we have we have some very talented players. We're really young, um, on the whole. Um, we do have a we we do have kind of an interesting mix of some veterans who are pretty good too. Um, but but generally, you know, the core of this group is very young, um, and we're going to add some more young guys um, who are hopefully really really talented. And I think uh, I expect and think that uh, that we're going to be a fun team. Um, to watch grow. And, and I, and I hope, I hope our fans enjoy it. Um, uh, I, th I think it's, I think it's going to be a, a, a fun next few years, um, you know, to, to rehash some things I said at, at, in at prior availabilities. Um, you know, our, our goal isn't to do anything overnight. It's, it's to build something really sustainable. And, um, and so, you know, we're, yeah, we're excited. Um, I think, you know, we, we feel good about the project. We feel good about the plan and, um, and, and, and really hope that, uh, that our fans enjoy it with us. I, I think, you know, we've been up until this year, we've been a perennial top team, which is really fun. But, but I also think there's that, that it can be really, really fun to, to watch someone grow into that. And, and I think that's the stage we're at now. We're trying to, we're trying to grow, you know, back into a perennial contender. And we're very confident that we'll get there eventually. Thank you, Rafael. We appreciate your time.